Thanks for having me. My name is Jordan Chandler. I'm the virtual building manager at Harper General Contractors. Um, we serve the Carolinas, basically, both on the general side and the environmental services side. Um, I've got you know, a few minutes to talk to you about a, a contentious subject. So I'm going to try to cram some information in and hopefully uh, get you to kind of walk away with, with some beneficial uh, info. Um, I'm going to try to focus just on the M360 model coordination aspect. Um, there's, there's a lot of pieces and parts that uh, you've already heard about earlier that all tie into that. Um, but basically, the, the few things that you need to start using model coordination um, would be BIM 360 docs. That model coordination lives inside the BIM 360 docs platform. Um, so you, you've got to have access to that. Additionally, you would need to enable the model coordination service. Um, and once that's enabled, create a coordination space. And uh, a lot of people get hung up on the coordination space and how to get the data in there. So I, I want to try to give you kind of a behind the scenes on that um, as, as quickly as I can. But essentially, if you're used to a GLUE workflow or you're coordinating in Navisworks, you know, off of a server folder, this coordination space is equivalent to setting up that project in GLUE or setting up that folder on your server where all of your data is going to reside that you're using to coordinate. Um, the coordination space is simply that folder just within the BIM 360 docs environment. So you're telling docs, I want to use this folder. It's located here. And model coordination will go pick the data out of that folder uh, and, and run some of the coordination tasks. And then obviously we need to put some data in that folder to coordinate. And I believe as of now, that data that we can use there are RVTs, DWGs, and IFCs as far as file type. Um, as for the functionality, so this is just a quick overview, the GLUE workflow. I think probably most people are familiar with that, but you've got some design authoring software, uh, pretty much any 3D format. GLUE is really good about accepting 3D formats. Um, and then you push it up to the GLUE server. You can merge those models, create clashes. You can pull it into Navisworks, go back and forth, et cetera. Um, model coordination from a BIM 360 perspective gives you a lot of flexibility. So we'll try to give you an example of that. You can set it up so that it virtually mimics the GLUE workflow. If your team maybe isn't working inside of BIM 360 or you know, you've got uh, a different file exchange, for example, um, you could set up a coordination space inside of BIM 360 and simply have your collaborators upload or, or publish their data to that folder, um, similar to like they would push up to GLUE. And then you can use the BIM 360 coordinate platform um, to run through the coordination process. And as of recently, you can now also use Navisworks in that process to open up those views to push issues back and forth, uh, et cetera. And then just kind of speaking to the flexibility a little bit more, there's dozens of ways that you can set up this workflow from um, inside of, of Coordinate. Um, for example, if your team is all working inside of a BIM 360 Docs Hub and your data is already there, maybe you've got cloud-hosted Revit models or work-shared models, your CAD files are saved there, you can automate or almost remove that step of having to regularly push or um, upload data, whether it's to GLUE or to a, a specified uh, coordinate folder location, just by using the, the automatic features of BIM 360 coordinate. And again, that's just pulling the data in. You can use the other uh, functionality of coordinate then on that data as it's updated live um, as people are, are saving files. Um, Speaking to that, basically from a Revit perspective, I think a lot of coordination in some way or another comes, comes back to Revit and, and some other file types. But another place where a lot of people get hung up is how do you get the data from Revit to model coordination? Um, and you can do a deep dive on that between the plans folder and the project files folder and how those interact with Revit models. But recently, Autodesk gave the ability to Use, you can set up that coordination space now in both the project files folder and the plans folder, or either one, it, it doesn't matter. Um, and so that, that added to the flexibility of the workflows. So you now can have your Revit model just you know, hosted as a cloud model in your project files folder. You can set up specific views for model coordination, um, put those into a view set, 
and then uh, either publish those views to work in model coordination or you know I'll show you later you can um, actually set up a federated model in your coordination space to pull all the other data in. Um, and from there, the views that you're seeing here kind of listed down on, on our last slide are all of the views that were in that publish list. So any of the 3D views that you've got set up that get published, get listed uh, or, or get brought into model coordination. Um, and then this is kind of the clash feature. So the automatic clashing is a lot of what you hear about when people talk about BIM 360 model coordination. And all that really means is they're taking each view and telling you if they're comparing each view with each other view and telling you if objects are taking up the same space. And out of the box, if you just dump all your views in there, it's, it's a lot of information. It's almost too much information. And I think it turns people away pretty quickly. Um, but if you start digging down into the, um, the options and drop downs, you can actually create some views that only contain specific, when I say views, think of like uh, merged models in glue. It's, it's the same kind of functionality where you're basically creating a view inside of model coordination that maybe only looks at all of the level one models that were published. Um, and so you can start to sparse down the clash data to where it actually makes some sense now. Now we can look at it and get some good feedback like we would uh, through Navisworks or, or some of the other uh, coordination functions. Um, and then inside of those merged models or those views in model coordination, um, you can start to look at you know, where you've got clashes and it'll list out you know, either you can clash structural versus all of your other trades, or maybe you just want structural versus plumbing. Um, e either way, you can use the drop downs to just kind of identify what you want to look at. One of the really nice features that, that we've gotten a lot of value from in model coordination is that it automatically groups clashes based on um, either object, system type, or remember the third one is off the top of my head, but that last drop down there lets you automatically group those clashes. And if you've ever had a piece of ductwork running through a floor joist or you know a, a, a truss or something, and, and that joist is made up of 17 different steel elements, you know you get your 17 clashes for the duct, and then 17 clashes for the insulation, and then the hanger, and so on and so forth. This kind of cuts down that process, just automatically groups that for you. Um, you know, I think Ava was saying using some of the features in Navisworks to kind of group those clashes. This kind of takes that step out of the process. Uh, so that's something that we definitely found pretty valuable. And then once you do identify a clash, it gives you an option. Uh, you know, I guess this third part or fourth part of it is the issues feature. And pretty much all coordination platforms have issue, you know, a, an issues function where you can identify a clash, assign it to someone, track it, uh, whatever the case is. Um, one of the things I, again, kind of liked about model coordination is that you can flag things as not an issue and you don't have to deal with them again as long as those element IDs don't change. Um, but let's say you flag something and maybe it is an issue. Uh, you run down, fill out the information as you would pretty typically with any of the coordination software. Um, and then you can assign that out to individuals um, and, and for tracking. And um, the nice part of that is there's not an introduced third party software. So we actually use Procore currently um, and we do use Glue and we use a lot of the workflows that have already been talked about. We've just started diving into this uh, model coordination workflow a little more and more over the last year to try to figure out how we can get, get some value out of it. And then I guess, lastly, I just wanted to throw out some tips out there. Again, it, it's a really flexible platform. There's a lot of ways you can set it up. It, you can really figure out what the constraints of your project are, what your project team looks like, whether you're on the construction side or the design side. And you can set up the coordination workflow to kind of match that or, or be the best fit for your team. One thing that we found um, that was really helpful was setting up, we created a coordination space and then set up a federated Revit model inside that coordination space. And that allowed us to link to all of our um, you know, design models or detailing models to bring that data in without actually having to create a copy of those models or um, you know, have people working inside of the coordination space. And so that process was, was pretty straightforward. I was able to just link everybody's data in, create a bunch of views for all the coordination areas that I wanted to see. 
And then anytime I wanted to update that coordination set, I could just go in, publish the views, and model coordination would be completely updated from all the separate trades. Um, you know, on the general contracting side, a lot of times we're working with um, detailers are people that have very different skill sets. Um, sometimes we get detailers or designers, modelers that are absolute pros and are teaching me things. And then other times, you know, we get people that are, are brand new to it and um, just, just trying to get their foot in the door. So that flexibility kind of lets us uh, adapt to, to each one of those skill sets. Um, and then again, just setting specific views for coordination. So whether you're using a federated model to push your own views to coordinate, or whether your team is, is publishing views to coordinate, uh, having uh, good housekeeping inside of their Revit files specifically, and, and setting up separate views just for the coordination effort, uh, we found is, is really important. Um, and Dana mentioned limitations. So there are some limitations. There are some drawbacks. It's, it's getting better. They've added a lot of functionality over the last six months or so. But a few of the things that we still run into are it's pretty limited when it comes to file types. So like I said, you, you basically got Revit files, CAD files, and IFC. Um, luckily, that covers a lot of what we do. But if you, you know, were comparing that to the list of file types that Glue can consume, uh, it, it's definitely a, short, a much shorter list. Um, the second thing is publish control, and that's something that I've seen on forums come up quite a bit, but it seems like you ought to be able to control where your published views land. So if you were in a Revit model and you wanted to publish your views, it'd be great if you could say, hey, I want those views to land in the coordination space or the coordination folder. Um, right now, that isn't really doable, but uh, that's something that, you know, with Glue, you can kind of pick where you want your views to land with model coordination. It's more based on where your Revit, Revit model resides. Um, and then the last tab there, you can set up model coordination where uh, your, your collaborators can update their models and then go into model coordination and get immediate feedback. I, I think that's the biggest advantage to Glue, in my opinion anyway, is, is that people maybe that are outside of our company or you know, across the country in some cases, can update their model and immediately get feedback on how that model has changed the coordination uh, model overall. And you have to be really intentional with model coordination in order to get that functionality. It's not, um, it's not something that's immediately, immediately there, I guess. But that's as fast as I can go through model coordination in a nutshell. Um, I, I think it's, it's definitely a good thing. I think there's some people, maybe it got released a little early. People have uh, some, some bad taste in their mouth, but I would I would encourage you to give it another shot and uh, check out the updates.